Why not? Let's get a lot of hits on our video Monday. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's picking up his daughter and Dr. Phillips. He's going to join. He wants to be joined on mine. Because. Hi, Neil. Yeah, we'll go about you. Matches today are only one away. Estimated completion matches the current budget. Anil? Okay, watch this. Here's that button. That's Krista. She's there. Krista, can you hear me? Oh, you're muted. As a fourth round, yes, that seems accurate because obviously it's just going to be done. Why is this green? Great question. That should be red. Red, red, red. Okay. Hopefully, everybody's safe from today. Six o'clock just goes to my phone. I'm driving, but I'm supposed to be in the background anyway, so I'll be listening. Hi, Jim. Make sure you stay Hi, in the background. Let me know if you need me for anything, okay? I'll fix that. You um, hear us? And we'll report to him too, right? That I just pulled down. I'll color code it and get it all ready um, and then sort it. And then I'll rebuild the other one. The Epicor is my only issue there. Uh, but I have a couple questions for you before I let you go. I don't need this anymore. I already wrote that in. Um, let me just save this for a second. Um, my first question is reinstate. So mm -hmm. I didn't know the answer for her, for uh, Jennifer. So she said, hey, I just got this started. Walk, walk away. Is back. They hear us. Um, I muted them because um, he was having a conversation. Yeah, yeah but you're going to hear us though. So they should be able to. Hey, Jim, can you hear us? Yeah, what was it? Sorry. I just want to make sure you can hear us. Yeah, no, I can hear you in general, but at, at times I may not hear a question, so you may have to repeat it, but I'm listening in. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Anybody else come into the room? No, it's not even it's coming, but it is somewhere. Corbin and this is remote, some remote also. Hello. Hey, how are you? You're in office again. Bill Long. Hey, how are you? Sit over there. We're more comfortable. I think there. Uh, I saw Krista at the. Yeah, she was. Uh, yeah, she. Yeah. 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 It really shows everything. Yeah, well, you see some of the best. Are uh, they they're working okay? They're working great. They clean up. I got four kids, teenagers in the house too. And I got a good friend who's got it. He has a six year old and a two year old, and he's been fine. Yeah. My wife had to have the white seats because she, she liked the white dash part. I'm ready for the Highland models to come out. Yeah, that's what Highland Max or something like that. That's not too nice. 5.31, kick it off. Do have a second adopt agenda? Second. Thank you. All right, meeting. Um, Tim, do you want to say anything while you're in the car?
Jose, give us that update. Go down. All right, so the celebration website. Um, there are some updates still pending on on the lifestyles piece. Um, something needs a question, and Lauren is addressing that. Um, as far as the registrar, um, we received information from from a resident, I guess, who had some prior experience with the with the register with the registrar and. Um, what I did was I went to ICON and requested a who is transfer. Um, so now we're at their mercy to see, but um, kudos to uh, Teddy, Teddy Long, I believe is his name, who, who assisted with this. And hopefully we get a response sooner than later um, to get that resolved. So that's where we're at with the website. Um, I did get the information from Freshie sites that we need. So we got, the, both the A records and um, the server name and IP address, so that when we make that transfer, we just do it right away. We do a cut over. So that's what I have for the website right now at the moment. And right. so just listen. So with that, with all of our topics that we see here, we've been having like meetings, smaller meetings, workshops. We're running aside to get more done. So with each thing, you know, Chris is working hard behind the scenes on that. Uh, Tom and I have been handling some of the stuff. Jose and I have been meeting on some things. So I just want to make sure everybody feels included. And I, and I apologize for some of us uh, that feel like they've not been communicated with. So when we go through these, uh, again, we, we want other ideas as well. So that's something, you know, and Corbin's been uh, on a project out in Disneyland. Mm -hmm. But uh, so just let us know on some other things you want to join, things that we have now or some other initiatives that we're working on. Right? So. But again, I think we're, 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 we're we've been spending a lot of other time, like off our normal monthly meetings. So again, Tom and I meet usually once every other week. Jim and I meet. I meet with Jose. So Anil and I, we meet in the gym working out. We stop for 20 minutes and, and catch up as well. So a lot of good stuff going on behind the scenes. But, you know, the communication's not been the best. But I think we're making a lot of progress. Which awesome. Any other comments on that? Chris, anything on the website you want to add? Thank you for the notes that you sent. Yes. No, yeah, just the the notes that were sent over. So um, the other thing to consider is obviously in set in motion is still hosting the site. So somebody's still paying that bill. I spoke to Steve Tonarico from IDIQ. Um, he sent me an email last night. Um, the if you look at the uh, at the who is there's an N1 hosting that's their server. And what I requested was for them to add those A records. He still hasn't gotten back to me. So that's why I did the who is request transfer request mm -hmm. through um, the, com the complaint section in ICON. And we provided them with all the information they require to make that transfer happen. Okay. Hey, hey Krista, I think yeah. both of them, both of them are being hosted through Freshy sites. They have very similar IP addresses if you ping them both. I don't, the who is still said it was under in motion, so that's where well, no, that's where that DNS, information the, is. Coming. No, the, the DNS is under in motion. Yeah, but the website, both the quote unquote old one and the quote unquote new one, are both on Freshy sites. Okay. Right. So we'll just have to make we just have to make sure. So there there is an expiration date of February. So there there is a five month clock ticking. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. I'm going on mute again. OK, thanks, Jim. OK, let's move on to the uh, EV. Now, I know we've discussed a lot about this the last year, so we, we also want to table the details on some of the things because there's a bunch of stuff going on. But we want to keep everybody updated of where we are. Any questions, you know, pe feel free to jump in, but we don't want to bury everybody with an hour of details because Tom has been doing a lot of work in Corbin in the past. Uh, a lot of moving parts right now with usage. Moving the moving them, CCD wants to contribute and help. They have some sites where to move them to. We have people with parking spots, but also usage who owns them, contracts, maintenance. One of them's down right now on the level three, so there's still a lot of stuff there, and we do own this. So, um, Tom, you want to give an update, just an overview? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know for sure well, that we do own it. We go ahead. Yeah, sorry, Jim. No, go ahead, Tom. I just want to make sure that you spoke to that. 
Oh, I know. I, all I was going to say was I, I, we haven't actually seen the contract. When in a conversation with Nova Charge, they believe that. Uh, well, first of all, officially, uh, Duke Energy owns them because they have titles, just like houses, and those titles have not been transferred. Now the question is, could they be transferred? And Nova Charge's opinion, my understanding from our conversation, was the level two. Yes. Yes. We can. All we have to do is ask Duke for them, and they'll give them to us. And uh, DC chargers, no. This is what Nova Charge said. Uh, we pointed out that we hadn't seen, don't recall any distinction in the discussions with Duke Energy when we set this up originally, that there was, there was any difference between level threes, uh, between DC and level twos. Uh, and the acid test, of course, is let's just get the contract and read it and see what it says. So, and then we can talk more, but probably, probably not here about any even is it even our responsibility to have a conversation about uh, the contract and maintenance and the cost and how much should we charge drivers to, to charge there and uh, all those kind of details we can iron out in a separate session probably with some other people right. finance so the information we have is the usage which is actually keeps going up yeah the, the actual level threes are even being used more now so it's a dip in like april and may but now yeah. more level threes and and Tom's pulled all the stuff. It's over 500,000 hits off Google, people looking for it. So I think people coming to eat and celebration want to use it. Pardon me? Why don't talk about well, they, 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 Nova Charge sent out a, an email today that the charger actually, the Fast Charger 1, which is the one closest to the entrance, uh, you probably, if you've been, well, you were there yeah, over the, there. That yeah. one's down. It has a tag on it saying it's out of order. Uh, they said it would be repaired today. Uh, but I think it's important when we look at this data and we start making this financial decisions to try to factor in how much of the usage on the level twos was simply because the level of the DC charger wasn't available and a guy pulled in the lot and decided to use a, uh, uh, a level two charger. And, and the reason that's important is we're going to have to pay money now to, uh, to, to Nova charge, right, for the chargers. So we have to, when we decide what the price should be for the driver, we have to factor in the anticipated usage. And I did some, I'm not gonna go through it here, but I actually created some data which compares all the level two chargers at all the different locations for the past two, two months and plotted them against Nova charges offers for different contracts to see where we would break even. This is really not a technology discussion, right? right? So it's probably should go outside of this group for somebody else to do. We have access to the data, but they maybe should do this analysis. No, and, and I'm proud of this team for leading at least the information through transparency. And when people ask about usage and, and, and things, you know, we have that information. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on? If everybody else wants to also meet with us when we meet on those, just let us know. If everybody said just anybody. So, uh, Neil, while you're on, while we go into projects, just got off. did he get off? I'm on. Is he on? Oh, okay. Sorry, okay. I don't see you. Okay. I just want you to give an update. We know it's not on the project list, but you would give an update with when we met with Jose on Saturday, because we do have people still asking about the quality of the board meetings, right? And the status of the building. We have some other equipment. We have things that we can probably tweak or if there should be investments. So I know I know you again, you've worked with Jose and that. So I'd like you to chime in, you know, some of the information that you have. Yeah, so so going back to when we met, we did some demo. Jose had a couple of demo units on there. I think the plan was to get, um, and Jose, I forgot the exact model of the poly uh, devices you were suggesting. It was the Eagle Eye Mark 3s. There you go. Um, and, and the plan is to use that. At the time, we were thinking of, um, they, they were looking at replacing, probably shutting down uh, 851 to do either renovation or what have you. So the Eagle Eyes are going to be a stopgap for whatever temporary space we're going to have board meetings. And, and Jose, if I'm straying from the topic here, keep me course corrected. When when we get to the point where we can redo that room or, or whatever the co permanent board member uh, meeting, whatever conference room they're going to use, we're going to, there's a couple of technologies where we're thinking of. We haven't landed on anything yet because we don't know if we b demolish and rebuild or we refurbish because that's going to dictate which one we go. Jose's um, 
and it was a mutual agreement. It wasn't. I don't want to just put it on Jose's shoulder. If if we're doing ground up, we may do a, a whole new system, most likely poly. But then there's another option. Jose, what was the option if we kept the room in the same configuration it is? We were gonna. We talked about doing some updates on the camera and and potentially the uh, the hub that drives it. Correct. Yeah, so so the gaming hub is outdated. Um, we did the latest firmware updates on the Yaylink hub. Um, it does not support um, dual camera remote, it's a remote uh, point to zoom, right? Um, but the newer version does. So you could purchase a newer module um, and then just replace the damaged camera, which is the one facing the board members. Um, temporarily, and then we can just repurpose it later on when we decide to go with a full flip system. That'll offset some of the issues where we're having. We figured out that when you keep the camera off, unplugged and unpowered for more than an hour, and you plug it back in, um, the camera works just fine and it's being read. What we find is that we climb up the ladder, we let it run, we try to initiate it, we can hear the motor that's supposed to turn the camera up and down making noise. We don't know what's tripping it, but it's an older camera. Yeah. Um, it, it, at this point, it's just worth replacing or, or and repairing. And for those of you, I, I believe, and Jose, correct me, maybe July, June, July timeframe when the the board had a temporary meeting at um, Heritage Hall, Jose did use the Eagle Eye there, and I can tell you the quality was night and day there. Granted, the room the room wasn't configured for board style meeting. It was to, again temporary setup. The Eagle Eye, it, it's a great solution, portable. You saw it zoomed in on the speakers. You can see their faces, and I get what everyone's saying. Whether it's Teams or YouTube, you're looking at the uh, current board meeting on. It's very hard, but it's the camera quality that we have to use there. But we can't, you know. As a as a technology group, and and even Jose as as uh, the champion here for that, we can't really nail down and go buy things when we don't know what the future is. So we have to sort of wait on see yeah. what the, what's the plan's going to do. From a board perspective, yeah, from a board perspective, that's ab absolutely correct. We we have not given any guidance to anyone in terms of being able to establish a timeline. Yeah, thanks, Jim. What kind of investment is that new Yale one? The new Yale Link hub um, estimated around twenty four hundred dollars, um, but it's it's a PC basically with all the proper ports required to do multi camera yeah. functions, um, and it's a little more sturdier than the one we currently have. Um, the Eagle Eye camera, it's eight hundred bucks, um, and it, it does the job. And because we have an existing one that we can use, you can use both of them, replace the two on top, and now they're both doing point to zone and they're auto focused. Yeah, so Jim, I don't know if you'd want to bring that up or not, if that's something people would want to move forward with or just use what's currently used and the, get to put. Can I make a comment? Because there was a recommendation and I was in agreement. Uh, um, Jim and I spoke. Um, and is it any one of you in the tech committee? want to steer the functions and controls of the camera during the meetings, I'm all for it. You know, um, sometimes I'm involved in the meeting and I gotta sit down, um, but I'm okay with it. And then, you know, you stay control over it. We talked yeah. about possibly having someone from the tech committee um, run that part of the meeting, run the kind of the, the video controls. and potentially any audio issues. You, um, you have to physically be in the room to do it, Jose? Not necessarily. What we can do is we can install, we can provision whoever's managing this uh, with the team viewer account, and that account will let them remote into that Yay link and control the meeting from wherever they're at. What I what I could make in a su suggestion is only I, I will commit to do it, but I cannot commit to do it for every board meeting. That's the, because timing and meetings, right? So maybe we can take turns. As a group, yeah. does that get us more into the operations of day to day? Though I, I have concerns there. What would your concern I, be? 
I, I, I don't want the running of the meetings to be the responsibility of the technology committee. I, I think it's great for us to help out, but I want to make sure that that's because that puts us in now we're operational people um, a, and left the committee until we have cameras that are capable to self sufficiently do this. So it's okay. not going to be. Yeah, the, 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 the way we have to look at it is it's a re implementation. And as a tech committee, you would be part of the implementation until it's approved and it's handed over to operations. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or, or I can do one more test, um, and Anil can can assist me. We can we can create another mock situation or mock meeting where we reattach that polyfam unit and make sure. That at the very least, that camera is doing its function with no issues, and we'll just keep it there going forward. And that creates a, a hands-off approach if if that is the concern. And as long as we can confirm that everything is working as it should, it's another route. Yeah, yeah. When you have the one program, when you have the one camera, Jose, right? You can you can have it do the same thing as the Poly's doing, correct? tracking right. the speaker yeah and so we need yeah i agree with you we have a test run make sure it's responsive enough to make sense to use it so i'll coordinate with a nail to test yeah one more but, time and, and if it works we'll leave it there yeah so, so a couple of things for this group to know on those and jose again jump in here and correct me it would it would almost be impossible to run them side by side, meaning the existing infrastructure and the poly. I think there's some challenges with that because of the yielding being so outdated. Um, and then two, because of the configuration of the board meeting and that L shape, we may not be able to capture everyone. So we'll run some tests and get back to you guys and let you know. Correct. Because I think Jose, that was uh, we we would have to stack the the board members differently in order to have them all in one frame. But we'll well, we'll confirm and come back. We we okay. are we are a very um, flexible board. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so more. Sorry, to I come. tried to go on mute before I started laughing. <laughs> more to come. Anything else on the uh, of Appleton? Okay. All right, let's move on now to the uh, GoGov. So GoGov, uh, at least with the waiting now. So I apologize, I didn't make it to the last board meeting. I thought it would be a low-key technology meeting and ended up having some fireworks. But uh, so we've been asked, Jim's asked me. I haven't gotten an official request from the board. I just had it from Jim about our team doing some testing. No, no, with, I did. Uh, this is my app. This is my compromise with the rest of the board. That's what they agreed to. The rest of the board agreed to assessing, uh, doing a bake off basically uh, between ONR's uh, service request and GoGov. That was that was approved by the board. OK. So we um, we've not had any more further meetings with the go -Gov side, right? So there's no, been no communication with them. We they satisfied very little questions. We got all the demos there. We had a meeting today for a half an hour with the owner team and developer uh, on their side. They showed us the the admin piece. They also said they could they also didn't like if anybody's looked at it so far I encourage everybody to look at it. There's a lot of categories, and they even said there's too many. Let me let me yeah. reiterate. I made that correction and I only added high level stuff. There's more that we can yeah. add. I did it because to Tom's point, it, it was just too much, and there's no search search bar anyways. Right. <clears throat> so it, he was right. We were going backwards with it, but either way, um, yeah, we have to still test it right and yeah. try it. But I think when it Comes down to the automation piece and the remote and the and the reporting. GoGov is still the standout choice for service requests. Right. So with all due transparency, Friday I think I met Jim and I met with Lauren and Jose. Right. Friday, mm -hmm. Friday morning. Yeah. And we had a conversation about it. Uh, 
we'll talk about the meeting today, but during that meeting, my point to them was the user interface, I thought both look good. We can tweak both, right? Both sides, we'll, we'll tweak it any way we want. My concern was on the back end, right? GoGov is a service. There's, there's no manpower in there. It's a service that handles everything and, and hands it off with algorithms behind the scenes of where it's supposed to go. The owner piece, which again, I like to use their interface, but what does that back end look like? What are the SLAs? Who handles it? Who comes in and sees the tickets? Who manages it? Who splits the tickets to where they're supposed to go? Right, because right now all the pink finger pointing in town is I, I used to do a service ticket and it sits there and weeks go by and everybody's pointing the finger. No, that's Sienna's. No, that's Grand Manor's. No, it's CCD. No, it's Canoa, right? And that's the one thing when you look at it from, and Jim made the, uh, Tom made that point today. We need to look through this with the resident size of the service and, and to we need to be an ex, uh, expedited closure of a ticket, right? So, uh, can I ask a question? I think so John, you and I talked talk, talked about this for a minute. Can we have someone do a um, a process flow? Uh, uh, Jose, that gentleman who you works. Flow, for, you want the flow chart? Yeah, just a flow. Like I'm a resident. I and what are the possibility outcomes? Right. I think as a as a group, this is where we're all technologists, and we think. And I'm not saying some things. We're, technology's out. We're bringing li live it. So when John or you or Tom or talk about things, we visualize it in our head. I think this is what we have to help with the um, the the board as a whole. Is here's the workflow. Here's why. If we're trying to make, if we're saying this is why we need owner on top of, or if we use owner and our residents only use owner, here's how it would route to to GoGov or the resident still has the ability to go to GoGov directly because some of the things that I've heard from that the board meeting is, so you're telling me I have to log into two apps? Not necessarily. You can log into one and have it do, but I think what helps with that argument on our behalf is having a process flow that shows if you use only owner, here's what it goes. If you use only GoGov, here's what it does. Because I think both applications, and I'm not trying to contradict anyone, both applications has its strength and weaknesses. We have to show why they complement each other versus, well, if I'm paying for this, I don't want to pay for this. I don't think that's necessarily the case because I don't think GoGov have the, all of the capabilities that we want it to do. The second piece of this is we want to also show from an automation perspective is it's not laborious on grand manners for half that everything comes into owner and then someone has to physically sit there and click and go this goes to sienna board uh maintenance group this goes to ccdd or whoever else we have to show that in order to fully sell this i, I agree and the only thing my concern is that there's some variables with owner because they have some features that are coming this is kind of new for them and they're mm -hmm. building it parts of it and it, you know you can sit and we listen to them today was, there's some exciting stuff coming right where again it's a piece of what they have gogov is a service i wouldn't call this the one service but it's a part of an application and a, a, a frame a management frame of how to handle tickets and stuff right so the, the, the other exciting part I want to stuff out. that they have coming is that service request late related or is it other feature related yes yes yeah, so, so sure. they have a service request component that now is going to tie their vendors yeah. and third parties so that they have their own management portal to respond to service requests. Because, Krista, what, what I saw today, uh, the, the, the admin piece, so like he was showing you come in, whoever whoever's assigned to it, and a dashboard opens up with all the tickets that came in. And from there, you kind of see it, you have to approve it. So a lot of manual part of it there. And I said that would work great just for Grand Manners, but that wouldn't work great for other tickets, depending on whether the, what services, associations, or agencies they go to. So the, the other part is that they did mention that they would gladly integrate GoGov into ONR. So they, they 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 said they would be more than capable, and it doesn't cost us anything because right. we're already under contract. So it would just be a dashboard of management just for the grand manners tickets, not everybody else's tickets. So, so where are we? I'm confused. <laughs> well, I think the request may be fair is not really apples to apples. Right. Right. It was approved and then it was unapproved a month later. That was the 
that's where we are. It was approved to go with gold gold golf. And there, and there was some confusion as to what GoGov and ONR were supposed to do. ONR was a replacement for RecPro, and GoGov is really the replacement for seller service. Oh, okay. But but because one had the the function had some of the functional features that that the other one has, they wanted to compare the two. Um, that's really what it boils down to. It's really that service request component. But um, even at the end of the day, just looking at the back end, there's more versatility, more manipulation, more reporting functionality and, and data that you can extract from GoGov than you would from ONR. That's what it boils down to. Yeah, right. GoGov is, Go is done. So, and now, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that. Uh, I'm, we're probably going to say the same thing, which is basically we're comparing something that's one application that's dedicated and has an end to end solution to the task. And the other one is building on top of other functionality. And it has other functionality that's useful to us. So um, but the ask was to specifically compare how each of them would handle service requests. Yeah, yeah, my only comment was that on the service request part, that Jose is right, there was confusion on the part of the board, even though we tried to make it clear that ONR is a comprehensive app that does many things. Problem reporting is only one of the things. We're not suggesting that anything else be used to do those other things, like schedule an amenity, a tennis court, for example. We're not we're not going there. We're focusing only on the problem reporting aspects of these two apps. Within that, the proposal was that in ONR, you would we would point to GoGov. GoGov has been thoroughly vetted, if you will, by us. We submitted many. And we're now down to the point of how an icon from a problem report is scaled to be displayed to that level of detail. ONR is nowhere even close to that. They're still developing this app. It's an app right. development. So, right, so that's what's hard to articulate to the other board members. We're really talking about frameworks behind the app that handle the service requests, algorithms that decide which one goes where, and GoGoWorks is a service that does this with hundreds, maybe a thousand communities across the country. ONR is building it as we go, and that's, that's impressive. I mean, it's impressive, but I just don't think it's there yet to handle hundreds of requests a month, three or four hundred requests a month that involve all these other agencies and associations. But we're already committed to ONR. Are we? Not, not for the service part. Like, well, right, they can we're, use it just to manage, we're keeping, manage tickets. We're keeping the commitment to ONR. We're just yeah. a thing whether we extend that commitment to service requests or we channel the service requests to GoGo. Nobody's debating ONR. ONR is in. It's a done deal. Yeah. It, the question is whether or not it's going to be used for problem reports. And if it is, is it its own problem reporting system or does it point to GoGov? Well, but Tom, I think I think the question is that the other board members, if they want to route, if they don't want to be a part of GoGov, right? Just say yeah. they say no, then we would have to go forward and use owner for tickets. Yes, right. And then the problem is when tickets get put in there that should be in GoGov and not in there, that's going to involve yeah. work on grant matters part to manage other people's tickets. But all of that is within the confines of only problem reporting. We're not talking about any no, no, other no, no, capabilities. No. So uh, how the other aspects of this get, get brought into the conversation, I I, I don't understand. ONR is a comprehensive uh, app that does many things, and we're not disputing that, and we're fully behind it. We're only talking about how does a resident report a problem, period. The, does it use GoGov? Does he use something? Does he go do it through ONR, or do we merge them in some fashion where he still uses ONR? We're not talking about get rid of it, and he just we point to GoGo. That's it. That, that's all it is. I understand it, but I think the confusion on the board—they understand the app part. They don't understand the backing. 
No, I don't think it's that at all. I think it's confusion about the cost. They well, also but, but said the that only two thing. of us logged in and tested. So apparently there's somebody's getting information from somebody else because that was the part that irked me the most about that meeting is we were being accused of not actually doing our job. So well, I, I well I tested it. I, I don't I know I, I've been I've been okay. Okay. Well, I got on it at some point. Are we talking about on on R right now or are we talking about yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> on R. So all right. Given all we have, uh, what is our proposal to bring back to the board? How are we going to solve this? So it's really up to us to just test the service request piece and get feedback, and get feedback so we can provide a comprehensive report that we did it and we compared it to GoGov and you know whatever that decision is that, that you guys recommend is what we're going to present. Yeah, and now and that I'm thinking about it, um, I think we could do a. a a um a deck as long as it has details right it's just they want something in writing that shows the comparison you started with the uh, phrase report but if if you guys think it's better to do uh, a deck do a deck okay again my concern is like that one night when you start getting into the weeds a little bit and some details they get confused really quick right oh, that's, right. Why, it, it, that's why i'm suggesting the deck because if we write a report and one of you, one one or more of you comes up and tries to explain it, I think you're right. We'll be in the same position again. Again, if if, if you boil it down to two things, and again, this is just hypothetical on my point. GoGov, there's no manpower. You're not paying from anybody from GoGov. There's no, there's nothing. Owner and Jose, I think you disagree a little bit, but owner could end up being. I don't know, 10, 20, 40, 80 hours a month of somebody from Grand Manors managing it. And that cost is not was not brought up in the meeting. There's never any more cost to go gov ever, but the owner side end up could being cost tens of thousands of dollars with man hours. So, so what I think we should do is schedule some time. I don't know if you want to participate in this one because we want to bring you in. So, well, schedule some time between like between this. Tom, Breck, myself, and whoever else wants to participate. And what we'll do is we'll sit on the admin side. Yeah, we have to create a route, right? Test somebody else goes and makes a request, see how that flows, and then we compare it. And then it would be one person testing it, the other one admins it, and then another person becomes the admin and the other one. Right, because so here's a quick example of follow the path. So they said today, like one of the topics is a light is out, right? Maintenance, a light is out. Now, again, the light could be in Sienna's pool, which Sienna would own. The light could be at Lakeside Pool, which Grand Manors would own. It could be a light in the street in my alleyway, which CCD would own. How does that get routed, right? And that we you can't have that sitting there for a month. And that's the crux of the that's problem. The, because, Bogart has that figured because, out. Because it does the automatic mapping of the location, ONR won't do it. Correct. You know, it'll it'll, it'll, it'll it, they showed it, so it was a big, it was a big dot. Like yeah. like your kid is in this area here, like not on the corner of the school, right? right? So I think GoGo right now, because they're more mature, and they do it for thousands, right. you know, they, it's more mature figuring it out. So they can just route the stuff way easy, where owner are actually, somebody has to prove and look in there and and And, and I, it's going to get better, no doubt. We think it's going to get a lot better, because they're, they're working on it. They want it to get better. For the deck, could you start off with the executive summary recommendation? And just start there, and if they keep asking questions, go deeper. <laughs> sometimes people just care about the executive yeah. summary. No, I didn't create it. Yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree. You know, tell tell them what you're going to say. Say it. Tell them what you said. Okay. And, and you need so, to present so, so, like the use case, right? You have to give them the the examples that you're saying here, and that that I think is impactful. Got it. So to stay on topic with GoGov, um, I'm almost done with the training videos. Um, so tonight I'll send you the first samples, review them, give me criticism, feedbacks, what you want me to change or not change. Um, GoGov, you said, or? GoGov. Yeah, so I have both GoGov and ONR running in tandem. Um, there's seven videos for ONR that covers everything except the service request. And I did that intentionally because okay. I want to make sure that yeah, GoGov okay. is going to be handling that. That's, you know, okay. Um, 
review them, look at them, give me feedback, tell me what you want me to change. Okay. Um, we, we, the way we did it was my, my voice doesn't lend itself to, to presentation. So we got this application called Revoicer and we did everything through Revoicer. We did screen capturing and a whole bunch of cool stuff. So I hope you guys like it. But okay. everything by the end of the week should be completed and then just one iteration change and pass and we can move it forward. Does everybody have access to the owner app? Yep. All right. Jim, do you have access? I don't think I do, no. Okay, so I'll make sure to give you access on today. And again, we, it, need that. we love a lot of the stuff of owner. I mean, but. yep. All right. Digital signage. So we finally got the enclosure. <laughs> uh, so now we just have to schedule for the weekend to come and mount them. That's the North Village and Heritage Hall. We already requested electric will be done at the other locations. We're just waiting for an estimate to be provided to us so we can get approval for it. Um, that's also going to involve us getting some more spectral units um, to attach to the TVs. Um, I did receive a request. So get smaller screens and put at all the amenity locations so that they can see upcoming events that are happening during the week on those screens. I think it's cool, but I'd rather run it by you. Are those 24 seven? They show off a certain time? Um, those will be 24 seven, so, you know, so. Seems like, like, the, like the North Village gazebo or Pavilion is like on all the time, even the lights at night. Right. Danil, you ever see the lights off in that thing? I do, actually. Yeah, when I'm going and coming from the gym, I do see that. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if what your thoughts on it is, if you think it's good or not. Or yeah. I'm just, I, I just think in my mind, room. in my mind, is we already have these big screens. We can put that on those big screens already, and as part of the, the flow of changing information. And if you know, when you look at that screen there, it keeps changing. You can just put that well, in. Well, especially if we have the events, because I know, because I'm very close to the rec committee chair, and people are coming to their meetings complaining they can't use the facilities, residents, because people are on it. And people are lying and saying they have it, and this and that. Everybody knows my bugaboo about the basketball courts. The kids, the teenage kids are getting knocked off it, and by the adults that don't even live in town and stuff. And it would be nice to have, if we put a digital sign, there's like what the scheduling is, like open or whatever. These are outdoor? These are, yeah. I think we should. I'm unplugged from this uh, topic, uh, but you know the CCDD uh, commissioned us to look, and we gave a proposal for outdoor signage for for the the unit by Lakeside uh, where the rocking chairs are. Yeah, the the wooden thing. Yeah. It's now just a hole. They wanted it there, and then it died, and now they're saying that we'd like to revisit that. Why would we revisit something new? Why would we just do whatever you're already doing elsewhere? So no, this is so so basically right now these are programmed to to keep like in a carousel format, display information periodically. Yeah. What they want is for the resident to go to X amenity, look at that small screen and say, Oh, this is what's happening today. They get the schedule of the rest, uh -huh. but it's all digital um, and managed in-house without interrupting what they're displaying on the bigger screens bigger screens the ones that we have at lakeside there's a big screen on Lake oh, yeah. side that has um digital signage that shows what's what's happening yeah okay what uh, putting aside the content that's on the screen the hardware that's at lakeside why wouldn't we just do make a clone of that and propose that ccd use that at their wooden sign on the oh i i don't, I don't have any objections to that. to that i just i just figured out that about the ccd before yeah, well, they it, it keeps it, you know, they ask for something and then they say they don't want it when you give them the proposal, even though they haven't seen a proposal, and then it comes back a few years later. This is this is the third pass on this that they've asked for. It. So third time the CCD has come to us and said, hey, well, we want to revisit the outdoor signage. So so who was the person they spoke to prior? Well, Jack, uh, I mean uh, uh, McLaughlin is the guy I was working with. Okay. Yeah. Uh, previous to him, 
uh, it was Patrick who preceded you was working with them. He put together a proposal. So that was second, and that's what I'm saying now. This is the third. Yeah, this, is still, uh, this is the first time I'm hearing yeah, about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, well, I didn't know this was here yeah. happening. So, uh, you know, I didn't. Your relationship with Jack, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I should say, hey, you know, right. you guys still want this? Here it is. Otherwise, yeah. if you don't want it, it's fine. We're doing it anyway. Okay. All right. I'm all for it. That works. Yeah. All right. So, so Wi Fi is complete. It's installed. I already put Andy to task. So, um, Put your your email for testing so that you can get the first initial reports of the throughput and the site site usage. Yeah. Um, once that's done, we're going to change it to tech committee so that the whole committee gets it. Yeah. Hello. I don't know, sir. So so what will end up happening is once we test it and and you, you know you think it's okay, then at that point what will happen is that we'll put it on the tech committee, and then if you want to see the report, you see. Yeah. The one thing I'll say, so I went on and used it. And it's installing a certificate on a device. And I was get I didn't know I was getting an error like the ubiquity certificate can't be verified. I'm like, what the hell is this? So we, and then you saw that problem. <laughs> yeah, just a very same problem. Yeah, yeah. We can fix that. Yeah. Okay. So the, the other thing is uh we did have some issues with some firmware updates. We yeah. had a rollback, and that's why you had that issue in that last meeting that you was on, on site. So mm -hmm. we rolled it back and we uh we're waiting for you um ubiquity to get back to us. Right. So if you want help on the certificate issue, then ask for it and we'll help you. Absolutely. This is the man right here that can fix it. So he's the ubiquity guy? One of them. Yeah. He fixed it at Iverson Park, yeah. so we it's, awesome. it, it's fixable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we did the owner stuff, right? Yeah, we don't have to go over yeah. that. Yeah, right. This is a big one, the key card. Again, we're working on the side on this, but we want to keep everybody up to date and informed. If anybody wants to join in, please, because we've, we've done a lot of work with this. So, again, let's give us an update. Um, we got the second level round of demos last week. So we have the final round of demos. And then uh, we had a, a final discussion uh, with Scott. And uh, Tom was um, was coming up to develop a matrix, and we went over this matrix to go over all three products, what what functionality they have, they don't, um, what their strong points are and, and aren't. And um, Scott went and gave it one final pass through, plugged in some numbers. We have that um, that spreadsheet inside the uh, Teams uh, folder. Yes. So we just have to review it and make a decision. But my position is that Gallagher is still the better choice. And um, there, there's something that I want to bring up because Jim was kind of, he had brought it up as well, but I guess I didn't put it into proper context. But he's willing to do the bulk pricing at a discounted rate, but provision us the licensing at, you know, 1000 2000 at a time at that price. At that discounted price, and we can and pay at the about. time that they're. We can pay at the time that. You're breaking up. Can we pay at the time that they're provisioned? So if we provision that's a correct. thousand, yeah. that's correct. That is correct. Love it. Now there's the other one was Paxton. The, the other third one we DMP and Paxton. Right. Those are the three. Yeah, but DMP, we got out pretty quick, right? There were right. some limitations, so, even just loading the users and stuff. So, so what if the, the only one that was close to it was Paxton, and that one caught us off guard because yeah. it was the licensing model well, was right. great. I right. like Paxton, right? There's uh, zero licensing. You can have a million licenses. Right. There's no charge. And then we can charge whatever we want for it. The DMP one was expensive, right? So if everybody knows Sienna right now, because I have a place in Sienna, they're charging $20 a credential for their phone. And every time you get a new phone or lose your phone, it's another 20 bucks. So people are complaining 100 bucks, 120 bucks a family for their credentials. Hey, can I make a suggestion on how to proceed? Yeah. All right. Because we don't want to go through the, we've already just decided, we don't want to go through this compliance matrix right now. It's got many rows and, yeah, and right. three columns. Um, but it is on a team site, and it's in a folder called access control. And in the spirit of full, collaboration with our fellow team members on technology committee. We ask all technology committees to review and we will then discuss um, the matrix. In other words, what does this point mean? And that when you say this person complies, what does that really mean? For every, to whatever extent they want it, whatever level, whatever level of detail you want to go into. 
but we'll do that offline, not in this room. And then we'll have come back and we'll vote on a recommendation. I would suggest you're the chairman, but I, uh, that we and then we say, go to the board and say, all right, the technology committee has thoroughly reviewed this thing and all members have seen it. And here's our voted recommendation as to what uh, vendor we should go with. Agreed. Agreed. You guys good with that, Corbin and Nell? Yep, I am. All right. So I have some additional elements. Yeah. So he, I mean, it's really impressive the demos that we've seen. Is I think it's really all the complaints we've got about celebration falling behind in technology. This would really transform us back, and it ties into the owner app as well with a lot of stuff. So. I really, that's going to be a big investment. We talked about leasing options and stuff. So, but so. anybody who <laughs> digs into this matrix and, and starts questioning is going to ask questions about uh, milestone, reference to milestone. So, I think we should get that out just now so you know what we're talking about. Milestone is a software package that runs on our security camera servers. So, and the servers are basically nothing but a computer, but it's a computer with a whole bunch of disks in it. It's a big, big piece of metal with a lot of, a lot of hard drives. Uh, but it basically is a low power computer. There's nothing hot about this computer. And it's running this very expensive software called um, Milestone. But Milestone has a whole lot of capabilities, integration capabilities. It's, uh, you, you could put plugins on it that can have license plate readers, it can have facial recognition if you want. It can do loitering. I mean, it can do a whole lot of things. And integration of the milestone security system, which is throughout celebration at all of our locations, including Anderson Park, with our key access system, our card key access system, seems to be somewhat critical. A person swipes his card. We've got cameras at all the doors. Uh, we can we could see who it was. A uh, person doesn't have a card. We can look at a camera. We can open the door remotely based on the guy calling us and saying, hey, I'm at this door and I can't get in. Uh, we can look in the camera anyway. So integrate, that's what that point, it's only one of maybe 20 rows, uh, but it's one that is, if you don't know what milestone is, that, that point will mean nothing to you, but it's an essential function. Now, most, I, I, actually, I think maybe only Gallagher has full integration. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Uh, but uh, the other uh, vendors had limited integration, if you want to call it, meaning they could look at camera feeds from, uh, uh, you know, addition, parallel, if you want to call it, parallel camera feeds off of our switches and then take action based on the content of, of those of those uh, feeds. These are all IP cameras. Uh, so anyway, that's what that means when you look at it. Hey, just going back to digital signage for a little bit. Um, Corbin, I know you're doing some work with Disney. Can you partner with Jose and others on this. Corbin. Yep, I apologize. I couldn't get off mute fast enough. Yeah, I was actually going to reach out to Jose separately <laughs> after this and say, if you want to chat, we can. Yes, good. And you want honestly, same thing with the access management. Yeah, okay. he's working. He's work. Let's use some Disney brain power behind this. Maybe oh, maybe right. Cor okay. maybe Corbin can get us. Uh, what's that watch you wear, Corbin? That band, the Magic Band. Maybe that's <laughs> what we go to. <laughs> no, just kidding. Magic Band Plus now. Okay. Yeah. I want to have our uh, one of our meetings over at Celebration Place. I'll work on that. <laughs> it could be at the park too. <laughs> As a, the, the park would probably be more fun. Yeah, I'm all for it. What's the club? The secret club? That's where we got to go. <laughs> well, 33, well, 33. All right, Jose, you have something else? Yeah, yeah so, so Tom and I had, had um, various discussions about um, a concern that you guys had throughout the years, which is <clears throat> about it, and that's ownership of all your virtual assets. So I already started working on a spreadsheet preparing it. I have a meeting with Tom Slayton on Monday, and Lauren's going to speak to him about it. Um, but I don't necessarily have a meeting. Lauren does, but it's something that's being brought up. Prepare the spreadsheet, 
make sure that he has all the admin accounts or the super admin accounts and that we get provision admin accounts so that in the event I'm not here, somebody from legal has access to all the all those resources. Um, same thing with the registrar. Once we get ownership of it, we'll just put that on the grid and make sure that everything is there. That includes hardware. So um, another discovery that was made through one of the milestone systems failing is that uh, we contacted Dell. Luckily, all those servers that were purchased were at end of life and they were their support ends December of this year. Um, luckily, we contacted them. They replaced the part. They sent the technician. However, uh, we have to start doing a refresh of our hardware at all of that. So, Jose, uh, another list. Yeah. Quick question on that. So, legal. I like I like where the backup is with legal, but is that a one man shop or is that an office? Meaning, is there multiple attorneys there or just one? I am not sure, but it's something I can verify. The Please. goal is that the no the nomenclature reads: no matter what happens, Croa owns it, and whoever's working for Croa manages it. Yeah, but but if it's a one man shop and for some reason we terminate that agreement, it can go a little haywire, right? So where I'm going with this is, I would yes, I agree there, but it should be also someone else, maybe a board member, the president of the board, the vice president, or Jim. He's the liaison. He should have uh, whoever the board liaison is should always have so the the football with them, if you will. So in addition to the legal service. It would have to be to pass. So in other yeah. words, it would have to be that I give them a USB with a spreadsheet with all the accounts, but I encrypt that spreadsheet and I give somebody else the password. What a, only it, when there's a break fix, then that person can get that password. Well, well, not necessarily. I'm saying duplicate. You can give password, username and password to both of them. That's the way I'm going with it. In case something happens to because Today, tomorrow, you hit the you hit the Powerball. What's it? One point something billion dollars. You say goodbye. In the say celebration. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're going to uh, what's it? Golden Oaks. So, um, <laughs> but you know, something happens. You go. Uh, you know, legal doesn't want to turn it over to us. At least we have Jim. We can go and get that stuff from. So I think it should be a two man effort. In addition to you, um, it shouldn't be just legal service. Got it. I'll bring it up and see what 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 it is exactly. Yeah, just, if it's an individual, or just if it's a whole corporation. Yeah, if it's a corporation, it's a different story, right? We just go to the corporation, whether that attorney is there or not. That's my only concern. All right, we'll find out. So those so those are the two things that I wanted to bring up, um, only because as we keep going to every closet, we're documenting, we're redoing wiring, we're tidying it up, and a lot of this stuff is. Pretty old. So, so a few minutes left. I, I, so I don't know if you guys talked about this before, and I'm sorry for if I'm dominating this meeting, but I've heard too many things going, you know, various channels. Let's just put it this way. I think we need to ensure that Jim, specifically Jim, has a, um, I think he dropped. Um, we're preparing him at each board meeting to give an update, particularly on the website. There's a lot of heat with the website, um, and I'm not looking for an update here, but collectively, Jose, you know, a couple of us may, I think Krista owns this with you or John, whatever the case may be, but there needs to be consistent update on progress on the website as part of each board update um, versus, you know, things that we're doing with Polly, you know, that's great, but right now, there's a lot of comments um, on the website and, you know, maybe even go as far as a timeline, publishing a timeline. What do we expect by when and when it's going to be fully operational? Disclosing that, you know, the technology committee is involved, you're involved, but it's really this outside factor that's really getting us there and also some of the risk and issues we're facing. If the community doesn't know, it's easy for them to say, um, hey, Grand Manners isn't doing their job. The tech committee isn't doing their job. The website isn't up. I can't do this. I can't do that. So, you know, we have to be transparent with people. 
So that's that's something that was brought up um, a couple of days ago. So Liz does something called the Monday Matters. And I think that's where we're going to start putting our updates with respects to the issues that we're facing and how we're dealing with it. I can't. I couldn't put a timeline on the issue with the site only because I couldn't find out who the owner or the registrar was. Mm -hmm. um, you, typically, when you purchase a, a domain, you know who you buy it from, right? right. And then, you, of course, you have your top-level domains carriers, but they won't tell you if you make it private. That's the issue. So I went to every single carrier that that I know. Back, I even did a, uh, a way, went to the way back machine to find out who in 2003 was the seller for domains because that's when the domain was purchased. And network solutions. Yeah, so I reached out to network solutions, and at that point, they couldn't do something. So we still don't I know. Them, I gave them Patrick's name. I gave them everybody. You know, whoever the owner was, I gave them the details. They couldn't tell me. The domain's free next year, right? It's, 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 it's fun. So to Chris's point, it's, we, we would have to wait to February. Well, why can't you just copy his email account and submit a request to ask him? I did. What happened? I had never got a response. So I, I, I even activated his, his mailbox. Yeah, and you went, did you do a forget password on the website to try to get it? Yeah. Maybe I need to come down and sit with you for I would. I would. Listen, at this point, I'll take anything out of it. That's I have like, a web background. That's, that's my world. Even better, because that's not my strongest. But um, Network Solution was reached out to. GoDaddy.com yeah. was reached out to. Um, I looked at all the historical data that, that I could find from inside the celebration files. Yeah. Um, the only real information I got was that InMotion Hosting had the two servers. It's right. N1 and N2. That's what shows up on the Whois, right? And that the contractor that was managing it, which was IDIQ, had access to the registry. Okay. But it makes sense. So yeah, we have the same situation. situation. So, yeah. so I spoke to, yeah. to Patrick. As a matter of fact, Pat, Patrick sent me a text last night because uh, another resident was trying to help. And they made an inquiry and said, hey, your name is showing up on a Wiz. And they keep saying the same thing. Yeah, my name was put as the person point of contact, but I never had access to anything. Also, Patrick, I thought Patrick said he forgot to. Pass no, he it. never. He never. He was put in as the point of contact. Yeah. Prior to him, it was Tim Duncan. And and basically, that's just a, a way to reach out to somebody, you know. And it says you're the admin and you're the tech, right? And it gives you a phone number and an email address, but it doesn't tell you where you purchased the domain from. It doesn't tell you who the own, who the actual, what, what the actual account credentials is. Right? Who gets the bill? That's what I was looking for. Because yeah. if I would have known that, I would have just gone to. Yeah, I would have used the credentials that were there. And, okay, I'll I'll do a little digging, a little more digging, and then uh, after this meeting, we can talk, exchange numbers. And yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Motions to adjourn. Motion and second. Yeah, say second. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Uh, favor of adjourning. Thank you. Uh, you want to adjourn or no? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a voting member. You can vote. Yes, you can. We're good? Yep. All right. Good night, everyone.